Hi, my name is Tara Newell. I killed my stepdad in self-defense. Well, my childhood is very, like, complex, I feel. Like, I grew up in Orange County, California. I had a mom. She was an interior designer. She ran her business. And then my dad was in developing. My dad and mom had their struggles and had a toxic relationship. My mom split up with my dad when I was seven years old. And from there, she dated a guy who bought my sister and I a dog. He bought us ice skates. He basically showed us what love bombing was from the age of seven. I was the child that didn't care if my mom started dating. The first guy that my mom dated was able to get a lot of money from her. I believe it was over $500,000. He had a wife and a family in New York. Even though he said he was separated and divorced from that family, he was actually with that family still. And his goal was to meet other women and get money out of them. My mom caught on that the first guy was stealing money from her and not being so truthful. And she eventually left him. And um, I think he actually left her, but she does talk about it a little bit in her book, I know. After that happened, my mom started to date again. And this time she actually dated someone that we liked. However, his daughters were older and they had an issue with the relationship. So my mom and that guy didn't end up together. Then my mom got set up on a blind date with a dentist, presented himself to be the perfect Christian man for my mom. And then my mom got married to him and then he really changed his persona. He wanted my mom to be the Betty homemaker mom, stay at home. He wanted her to have food on the table every night by 6 p.m. And then it came to a point where he actually went to my mom's work and would watch her work um at her stores and would stalk her that was my mom's first marriage after my dad that went on for about two years on and off but then after that my mom ended up meeting this hockey player and i actually liked him i felt like he really helped us out when my mom was losing our house. He took his inheritance and he paid for everything. However, he was abusive where he did hit my mom in the face and he did hit my sister's boyfriend and the cops were called and he got arrested one night. Then there was this guy that she actually met. And this was when I was probably uh, 23 or 24 living in Vegas and i get to meet him and then this guy becomes her fiance this guy ends up being a major player a con artist and then he actually had a lot of other relationships during that time as well and then he would tell my mom that she was ugly and she was fat and stuff after the relationship and he really put a number on her I am 24 years old. My mom meets this guy, John Meehand, on this dating website called Our Time. She meets him and she's like, this is the most wonderful guy, Tara. And I'm living in Vegas at the time. So I'm like, okay, like, this is great. You're meeting someone. I'm happy to hear this. And then I get a call from my sister. And my sister's like, oh, no, Tara. I met this guy. This guy was analyzing the house looking stuff up and down like no this guy is con artist and my sister since my mom was living with my sister my sister said that that guy is not allowed in her house and so that created my mom to get a place on balboa where she could spend time with her boyfriend without having any issues from my sister we ended up meeting john so my mom came down and then she was like oh this is John and I was like okay like nice to meet you John and he was just like hi like kind of cold and reserved and stuff 
And we still didn't, we weren't aware that John was like moving in during this time. We thought like, oh, he's just staying here for like a week or two. I don't know. He's just staying here while she moves in, you know. After Thanksgiving, I actually wasn't allowed to go to Thanksgiving. So that really put a drift in my mom and I's relationship. I stopped talking to my mom for a little bit because I was like, how dare she choose a man over her daughter? How dare she not even see that this is wrong? There was no apology. There was no anything like that. It was, you acted like this. How can you not see that he's trying to be a good man? Why are you saying this about him? There was no, like, I'm sorry that this happened. And so it got to the point where I was like, I can't be without my mom any longer. And we decided to go to therapy so that we can learn how to be cordial with each other at Christmas and have John there as well. And we did decide that John was going to come to Christmas John was going to go hang out with the boys and I was going to hang out with the kids and do the cooking. However, John did not stick to that plan. He showed up with a bag full of presents for all the kids, went straight to the kids where I was supposed to be. So like he was just doing anything and he everything to like, you know, be the glorious guy that came in. You know, he wanted to be like Santa Claus and show Oh, guys, she's the one that's crazy. After Christmas, my family hired a private investigator to look more into John because at this point, we were all kind of being like, oh, something's off. And at this point, the kids were starting not to be allowed to be with John because John told one of my nieces about the birds and the bees and was saying inappropriate things to them. And so my family was like, okay, you're not allowed to have my kids around John anymore. And they started to put up boundaries with my mom with that. And little did I know, my mom actually got married in December before she left him the first time. So that was another factor to her getting back together with him was she didn't want to have another failed marriage. She was being monitored to the point where she couldn't really see her grandchildren. And this really created a divide with them because her family was the most important thing to her. And then she left him. My sister Jacqueline went with him or went with her to film them taking everything out of the house so that they could have everything on film and you know the court could see that if he were to say oh she took this she took that then he actually calls the cops he said that my mom punched him in the face and then she was on the phone with the cops and she says well that's really hard to do when i've been in vegas and so that got dismissed however she had to live in hiding at this point from him because he was sending threats. He threatened to shoot my sister with a sniper rifle. He threatened to put my sister um, mafia style at the bottom of the ocean with the bricks and the bag. He told another lawyer that he would actually kill me my mom and my sister and bury us in the backyard at the vegas house and at this point he was stalking us after my mom left him the second time i left my work at 5 20 like 5 20 or 5 22 something like that and then i got home um at least 30 minutes earlier And so I drove through the gate. The the gate was broken during this time. And then I see someone with a tire arm and they're kind of just like fiddling with it. And my dog is barking and aggressively barking at them. I just thought it was a homeless guy. 
And so I, t I told my dog to knock it off. I go to pull into my parking space and then I get out. I grab my dog and then I walk by my license plate. I pull like straight in and I that's when John grabs me by the waist, looks me in the eyes, and says, do you remember me? I didn't say anything to that. I actually dropped my dog leash, and I put my purse up by my heart, and I tried to flee and run away, and I was unable to run away from him. Um, he was grabbing me, and he was trying to cover my mouth, as he would try to cover my mouth, I would bite down as hard as I could. Um, so he actually wasn't able to cover my mouth at all because I just kept biting him. And then at this point, I thought I was being punched, but I actually wasn't being punched. I found out later that I actually got stabbed. Um, and but it was really lucky because I put my purse up and if I didn't put my purse up, he would have stopped me in my heart. And so I start kicking him, kicking his forearms. And at this point, I realized that he has a knife and that he had a knife in a Del Taco bag beforehand. So I'm trying to kick the knife out of his hand. I was able to kick the knife out of his forearm and it landed on my right hand side. I'm right handed. I thought I stabbed him in the chest, in the front of the chest. Uh, my memory still won't allow me to fully see where I stabbed him, but I ended up stabbing him in the back of the chest, like around his shoulder area, 11 times. And then I heard him gasp and so I was holding his body and holding his head. And then I did two stab wounds to the head and these are the ones that I actually remember. So I called my mom and I told her, I told her, I'm so sorry, I think I killed your husband. I knew he would do this. During this time after everything happened, um, I really went through like a hole like where I realized these people that I thought were my friends weren't supportive um i had a couple of friends that were supportive and you know the friends that call me crazy they still wanted to party with me though they still wanted to go out drinking and so i would go out drinking i probably went out like at least four to five nights a week because i also didn't want to be alone so i was like i you know i hit my rock bottom and i was like i'm gonna get better now and so I went into EMDR twice a week, stopped smoking pot. Um, I did rock climbing. I did hikes every day. And I did what was good for me. The now goal is to create a number one podcast with Survivor Squad. I just really want it to do well because I want it to show how victims can get the upper hand over their abusers. As for advice for another survivor, I say it's extremely important to get therapy, a coach, or help, someone that understands trauma. Because there is a lot of therapists out there that don't understand trauma. So, so important to get with the right person. And I even do trauma coaching if you need it, but I also will tell you if you are not the right fit for me. And I won't leave you hanging. I'll like give you resources or I'll tell you where to go because I don't think that anybody should be without help. And even if you see like one of my coaching seminars and you're like, oh, I think that, that would be perfect for me, talk to me if the money is an issue because I'm always willing to work with that. My mom and I have a pretty good relationship. We understand that our relationship may not be perfect. However, we are willing to forever work on it and have the conversation about generational trauma and how to bridge that gap. I'm Tara Newell. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I hope that you guys have found something in it that can conform to your life and help heal you. So thank you so much for listening.